Now, our next speaker, we saw him in our film uh, just a few minutes ago. He made the remarkable documentary as Britain's Trillion Pound Horror and Margaret, Death of a Revolutionary. He's been described as the Michael Moore of the right. Always controversial, always compulsory viewing. So let's put that to the test right now. Would you please welcome the founder and CEO of WAG Television, documentary maker extraordinaire, Martin Durkin. Martin. <laughs> So, the IEA is 60. What a venerable old established institution it has become. Or has it? They look terribly respectable in their suits in their nice Georgian house uh, around Westminster, but take it from me, they're like the Viet Cong. They're, <laughs> they're digging tunnels around the whole place. Other nice, polite think tanks, do, they, they develop policy for policymakers, not the IEA. Policy and poly, policymakers, they're the problem. Why should we, why should my life be the subject of some policymaker? It says economics innocently in the, in the label, but the IEA, as we know, wanders around planting gunpowder in the cellar of prevailing Keynesian economic orthodoxy. And as for the lazy, tariff-loving big capitalists at the CBI wanting to seek protection from those rough boys in China, they can forget it. The IEA wants to expose them to the most brutal competition from the hard-working Chinese. No, the IEA are, are radicals, take it from me. Now, when we think of radicals and troublemakers, we usually think of the stop the city, grungy greens, the rich kids with their designer ripped jeans and Kiehl's hair gel, wandering about the place, decrying globalization. But they're the ones who want restriction. They're the ones who want prohibition and regulation and authority. They're the ones who are fearful of people around the world interacting freely with one another, being able to buy and choose what they want. They're the ones hateful of the mass production and consumption of inexpensive goods. They're the ones who want to make us less free and less prosperous. The real radicals are the ones wearing suits down in Lord North Street. I say wearing suits, uh, but you, know, you look at Mark Littlewood the swashbuckling Captain Flashheart of the IEA <laughs> with his rakish three-piece and electro-sig hanging from his mouth. He manages to make wearing a suit look like an act of defiance. <laughs> Philip Booth wears a suit jacket, but it's the wrong sort, it's tweed. He, in fact, he looks like he's on the parish council of the Vicar of Dibley, which, which is a kind of Yorkshire kind of um, a rebellion, apparently. I don't understand it. Richard Wellings does a crude impersonation of someone wearing a suit, but you can tell... Sorry, Richard. But you can tell that his soul is wearing Che Guevara combat fatigues <laughs> down in the cellar making Molotov cocktails. Christopher Snowden doesn't bother wearing a suit at all. He has a dangerous air about him, like that of a man who's going to flirt with your wife in front of you. <laughs> They've always been radicals. My introduction to the IEA was meeting the great Ralph Harris. What a guy. He managed to be subversive while wearing a cravat. <laughs> that was some achievement. So charming, more like Leslie Phillips than Leslie Phillips. <laughs> but what came out of his mouth was shocking and daring and explosive, really exciting guy to be around. It was Harris who seduced me. I used to be on the far left, but the IEA turned me from a scurvy revolutionary to a scurvy revolutionary of a different kind. I wanted, the journey wasn't very far politically. I wanted liberation and material abundance for the masses. The IEA just showed me how to do it and how it was being done and had been done. I hit upon the wheeze of taking really naughty IEA ideas and making them into TV shows. And I was richly rewarded with, thank you, more, com <laughs> with more complaints than Ofcom and the Broadcasting Standards com uh, Commission had ever had. <laughs> and that taught me a lesson. 
It's easy to upset our vast publicly funded establishment, the tax munching legions of scientists and journalists and academics and regulators and bureaucrats and arts industry bloodsuckers, excuse me. <laughs> they don't like it when the scallywag IEA comes along and challenges their authority and threatens their income. Never mind 60. If the IEA lasts 100 or 160, it will never be part of the establishment. Now, I know what you're thinking. How, could we pos how can this chap possibly say we're not part of the establishment? We're sat around, we're having this Oscar-style dinner organized by Angela, all the champagne, and of course, black tie. How can black tie ever not be establishment? Well, look more closely, look more closely. M&S. <laughs> 75 pounds for, this, for top and trousers, mass-produced, China. Not quite disposable, but nearly there. I, I warn you not to brush too close against me. You get electric shocks, but still, I love it. My wife has insisted that I point out that her dress is not from M&S. And I can vouch that it costs more than 75 pounds. Now, we've gone about the Thatcher revolution. But as we know, the Thatcher revolution was incomplete. It was more like an insurrection. So enough of this, oh, we're 60 years old, you know. 60 is the new 30, forever young. Plenty of freedom fighting still needs doing. So comrade rebels, here's to the next 60 years. <laughs>